time to talk about the Lorica Hamada. What we'll do here is briefly examine the armor, and in future videos go into detail about specific aspects of both it and of male production more generally. Hamada, or male, was probably the most common form of body armor used by the Roman military, seeing use from at least the Mid-Republic all the way to the end of the Western Empire in 476, and from then well into the medieval era of the Empire. It's not certain where male originates, although it appears to have been somewhere along the Eastern European and Eastern Steppe region. One of the earliest examples comes from a 3rd century BCE Celtic find in what is today Romania, although there are potentially some 5th century Scythian finds that had it, but much of that armor is far too corroded to really draw any kind of solid conclusion. The Italian peninsula was wracked by wars for much of the 4th century BCE, and it's during this period that the Roman military begins to alter their equipment, learning from both their enemies and their allies. From the Samnites, the Romans adopt the use of javelins, while it's from the Celtic peoples that they took male. Roman sculpture is actually fairly consistent in its depictions of male throughout the period, and when this is combined with archaeological finds, it would appear that the Romans developed five different styles of male armor. The first two, seeing use in the mid and late Republican periods, as well as into the early Imperial era, are the Gallic and Greek styles of mail. Both of these styles lack sleeves, with the distinction coming from the degree of shoulder and upper torso protection offered. In Gallic style mail, an additional piece appears to have been wrapped around the upper back and shoulders, attaching to the front of the shirt almost like a cape. Greek style mail also has a covering like this, but it was wider, passing down over the shoulders, and offering some defense for the upper arms. Both of these styles have the edges of the second piece covered with leather, likely acting as a further method of binding the mail together, and, although the artwork is not clear, it's speculated that the underside of the cape would also have been faced with leather to protect snagging on the main shirt. During the first century CE, the design of Roman mail changes. The shirt overall becomes shorter, coming to an end around the hips. The cape appears to have been done away with, and short sleeves ending around the elbow are added. By the 2nd century, during the height of the empire, this style of mail appears to have been common for both cavalry and for auxiliary troops. And, although the cavalry is sometimes depicted wearing mail with the coat extending towards the upper thigh area, the overall reduction of the length of the armor negated the requirement of a belt to distribute the weight of the mail. So, in response to this development, swords largely cease to be hung from the waist, and instead begin to be worn slung diagonally across the torso. The Antonine Era, during which the military saw a drastic change in the style of equipment used, also saw the further redesign of Hamada. We don't know too much about this, but what evidence we do have suggests that the sleeves stayed about the same length, while the overall male shirt became looser fitting, and the neck slits became elongated, allowing greater flexibility. Any evidence of an additional male defense with the shoulders, so common in Gallic and Greek styles, disappears. It's been argued that this redesign made the male useful for cavalry, as there is one argument that the infantry became more lightly armed in this period, wearing only leather and scale armor, although it has attracted a great deal of criticism. We do have a few archaeological examples of male from the late 2nd century and the 3rd century, but most of the finds are corroded to the point that beyond stating that they were made from iron, it's difficult to determine if the links alternated between punched rings and closed rings, and even if bronze or copper rings were used in decoration. Sometimes, that shows up on the edges of the coats, but we don't know very much more than that. It's during the late empire that the last style of male construction arrives. The male coats grow longer, reaching down towards the knees, with 6th century examples reaching as far as the ankles. The loose-fitting form and the sleeves are kept from preceding periods, but what marked out these late-period coats of armor are the sheer length, as well as the presence of a significantly wider neck aperture. What we can see with all of this, then, is that the Roman military consistently adapted their mail in order to face different kinds of threats, and to better handle different situations over the course of the Empire. Now, we won't be talking about the construction of Lorica Hamada here, as I have a video in the works on the general construction of male armor, in which we'll talk about it, but I just want to mention the Fabrici, the state-run arms factories of the late Roman Empire, and how they relate to male production. 
Typically, the fabrikai are depicted as large workshops, each one specializing in the production of a different kind of offensive or defensive piece of equipment, and the production of male coats was no different. Producing mail is not an overly complicated process, more than anything it's just time-consuming, so it's entirely possible, and Travis's Roman body armor suggests this, that rather than having the mail always being produced in fabrikai, it's possible that the production of mail simply involved entire villages during the late empire, freeing up the fabrikai to make more complex weapons and armor. So, hopefully this has been a decent overview of this armor for you and in future videos we will get into the specifics of its construction.